Good morning, Atlantis, and we sure wish uh, Mike Godspeed as the newest uh, crew member of Mir and uh, send him off uh, with a tribute to his homeland. Well, thank you, Bill. We'll have to pass that over to them as soon as we see them. I guess they're going to wake up in another half hour after us, but uh, appreciate the words, and uh, we're off to a good start here this morning. Uh, ready to go start paying load, playing the loadmaster here. Atlantis Mayor Houston, we're now live with you in the HAB. Mayor Houston with a request for the flight deck. the flight data file and uh, understand AS01 for one of the two kits that you say will uh, return, is that right? Charlie, uh, all five kits are still stowed in AS01. Okay. for Commander Sibley, please. Uh, the recent problems you've had with Mir's life support systems have caused quite a bit of concern in the United States. How serious were those problems in your opinion, and how would you assess the station's overall health at present, uh, given the repairs that you've made and now that you have a new electron oxygen generator on board? 
последних событий, связанных с системой, проблем с системой жизнеобеспечения. А могли бы вы рассказать о состоянии станции на сегодняшний день и как, значит, какое состояние станции после того ремонта, который вы осуществили? You see, I'm alive and healthy, fully, smiling, so the condition of the station is just as the same way. Of course, we've got uh, now uh, quite a bit of cargo and equipment uh, that's old and outdated, and we've either got to throw it away or uh, take it away from the station. So we uh, are kind of full of stuff here, but otherwise the station is fully com is, is normal. Everything is very reliable. So the problems that we had with the uh, thermal control system was uh, fully fully repaired. So everything's working working fine. It's as a backup now, so we practically have no problems. Well, just one more along those lines for you, Commander Sibliev. I mean, given the age of some of the components on Mir, how long do you think the station can reasonably be expected to operate in the future? Как вы думаете, в течение которого промежутка времени станция еще может функционировать в связи с тем, что многие компоненты оборудования уже устарели? Replace them more often, they, the station will operate very long time. The station was originally planned for three to five years, and now it's here for 12 years, so it's rather more reliable than originally expected. Commander Precourt, this, of course, is your second visit to Mir. I'm, I'm wondering, what are your general impressions of the station's health as you float around and, and look at everything? And, I, and, and as the American commander, are you satisfied Mike Full has a safe place to live and work for the next four and a half months? Yes, I am very satisfied. Uh, when we went over there yesterday, I could tell you that it, it doesn't look a whole lot different than what I remember two years ago, except for the fact it's larger now with two additional modules. The Perota and the docking module were not here when uh, we docked on STS-71. Uh, but in addition, they've had a lot more equipment delivered, so there's not uh, really that much more free space. And as Vasily hinted uh, earlier, one of the problems they have is trying to find space to work and, and uh, the equipment that is no longer used on station is uh, somewhat of a bother, and if we could find a way to uh, unload that as we go on, it'll help them be a lot more efficient. Well, Commander, uh, getting back to the current mission, um, I wonder if you can maybe give us a, a, a sense of how Jerry Leninger is feeling, how eager he is to get home to see his family, uh, what he might have said to you since uh, you've had a chance to chat. Jerry's ecstatic. Uh, he's had a really good mission. And uh, I think he's feeling a real sense of accomplishment, uh, especially now that Mike is here. He's really directly applying the lessons that he has gathered uh, in his stay to preparing Mike for uh, the next part of his mission. Um, and specifically with our transfer, Jerry and Mike are working real hard right now to get the equipment for the science stowed where it's easily accessible for Mike so he can be more efficient than Jerry was. And Jerry was pretty darn efficient, so um, he's got a real sense of accomplishment. He's got uh, a lot to be proud of, and he's real happy to be uh, coming home with us. Um, a question for Commander Sibley of along those lines. Uh, sir, you spent three months with Jerry Leninger, or four months, I should say, with Jerry Leninger aboard Mir, and of course you already knew Mike Full. Um, what are your thoughts about working with Americans on the station? Uh, how well do they fit in, and, and do they have enough training uh, to help you and your flight engineer with station maintenance or emergencies? Вопрос касается отношения того, что вы провели четыре месяца на борту вместе с Джерри Леннинджер, и поэтому значит, вопрос следует, а как вы считаете в отношении тренировки американских космонавтов, как они а, подготовлены к этому, как вы с ними а, общаетесь, а, а, точно ли они проводят ремонт и так далее? Well, it's always easier for me to deal with American astronauts because everyone knows their tasks, we don't interfere with each other. And we have to help one another. We don't never have any problems. So we say something like, "Hey, Jerry, help us out with this," and he'll say, "Okay," or he'll come with to me, and he'll say, "I've got a problem," and we'll help him. So we work together in this fashion, and it's very interesting. The major point is not to interfere with one another because everyone's got to know their own task. Everyone's got to do their work correctly. So uh, this professionalism is what saves us. If, uh, so preparing for uh, space is not something that takes one or two days, but it takes years. And 
It's the idea that you just have to answer for your actions, and you have to know how to work with people. Thank you. And for Commander Precourt, uh, changing topics a little bit here, this is the sixth in a series, of course, of nine shuttle mirror docking missions. Um, aside from helping the Russians keep the station supplied, uh, what does NASA still have to learn from this program now that you've done six of these? Well, every time we come up here, we learn something new, and uh, really our efficiency is growing immensely. I can remember just uh, on STS-79 and 81 listening to the debriefings about the, the level of difficulty during the transfers to coordinate the equipment that needed to go across the hatch. We have yet another 1,000 pounds of, uh, of equipment, yet our efficiency, I think, is higher based on the lessons from uh, those previous flights. There's some incremental uh, lessons being learned here. There's also some uh, conceptual things about uh, rendezvous, for example, uh, some fairly large uh, conceptual changes in the way we are going to approach the International Space Station are being developed using flight tests from the flights that we're doing here. If you just compare a flight test program for an airplane where you can take a, a flight a day and uh, try to gain as much information with a flight every four months, uh, you can see the difficulty in, in carrying those lessons forward. So, you know, six, nine flights is not a tremendous amount of flying when you've got as complex a mission as what we're trying to do. So uh, every flight that we get is going to have immense benefit for our efficiency on the space station that we're building. And that's really the key here is how we can uh, double or triple our efficiency over the coming years with the International Space Station. It's going to be four times as large, four times the volume, and we'll hopefully get uh, more than four times the productivity out of it.